again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Alumni Chats, a weekly podcast featuring alumni from the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism here at Western Illinois University. My name is always Buzz Hoon, and I am the host of the podcast today. I have the pleasure of talking with a good friend of mine, Dave Nozar from 2007 or 2008. We're not really sure, but we'll find out in this podcast episode exactly when Dave graduated. Dave, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, Buzz, for having me. I really appreciate it and uh, really excited to talk to you. It's been a, it's been a long time. It's been like <laughs> it's, uh, 12 years. It's been too long. It's yeah. been too long. So tell us where you are and and what's going on in your life. Uh, So I'm currently living in Munster, Indiana, which is just over the border in Chicago um, or just over the border in Illinois, about 35 miles south of Munster. We were living in the uh, city, my wife and I, my two kids, Joe and Molly, who are uh, two and three. Molly will be turning uh, three in October. Joey will be turning four in August. I can't believe he's already four years old. Everybody always says it goes by fast, but when you're, you know, waking up at one in the morning with the, with the kid and you're in that state, you're like this, I don't even know what you're talking about. This is, this is not great. So um, he's, he's getting older, which is great. So we're in Munster um, and I'm currently a regional uh, director of partner sales in the Midwest region. Um, And then of course uh, doing a podcast. Yeah. So you're working for us signal. Is that right? Is that the the company? Yeah. Yep, correct. So we're a managed service provider out of the Midwest. Our headquarters is in Grand Rapids. Um, we supply customers with data protection. Uh, it's backup as a service, disaster recovery as a service in case of a ransomware or malware attack. Uh, they can be spinning back up without paying a ransomware. Um, and, you know, we seem to hear about it in the news every day. So uh, we help clients uh, um, get out of that funk uh, if they do find themselves in that situation. Well, let's let's go back in time and, and talk a little bit about your your journey to WIU. And we were just talking before we got on about your you you grew up in the Chicago land area. You're from yeah. uh, you went to probably high school in Chicago Heights, right? Uh, yeah, Homewood Flossmer High School. So it was out of uh, Homewood Flossmer, but yeah, Chicago Heights H-Cup, district. Yeah, yep, That's H-Cup, H-Cup, yeah. yeah. So they had a, they had a, they had a big radio program there, um, and and that's really where it all started for me. Um, is that when did you did you come here with the interest of of pursuing that sort of uh, career in broadcasting? Um, no, ironically enough, and this will make probably half the audience uh, laugh if they know me. Uh, I actually started off as a criminal justice major, uh, and it was probably two weeks in where I looked around and uh, I was like, "Yeah, this is this isn't going to work out." Uh, so got out of that. Uh, and then that's when I went into, I think, furthering the fine arts degree at Western <clears throat> because I had done radio at HF and they had a, a full program at that point. You know, so we were doing, you know, coming into radio at WEIU, I was doing, you know, 55 minute documentaries on, you know, the Secret Service all over, ra- you know, the radio for, for our, our high school. So um, I was like, you know what, I'll probably just go on the radio and see how that goes. That's how I got in. And one of our first uh the way our our paths kind of crossed is you were in a class for me. Yeah. And one of the requirements is we had to, um, I wanted some students to get some experience being on the radio. And I think uh, WAXS back in the day, oh which was God. providing audio for a cable channel. Yes. And uh, you and I think Joe Roderick got together and, and did your, you wanted to do your own show. I met Joe, the stars aligned. We were in, I think, uh, <laughs> where were we? Henninger hall or something. And, uh, he didn't really have that much radio experience. And I did coming in and I said, uh, at his, at the time we were, his nickname was Joe dirt. And we said, Hey, you know, let's, let's get a show going called dirt and DJ. And, um, at that time, I think we were sophomores and yeah, we were like, okay, where do we do this at? So we did an hour show for WAXS on the TV channel in the little room that was next to the, the main studio. I think it's where they might've read news. Uh, and at one point, I think we had a full-blown morning show. We had a couple. Uh, Cassidy was there, uh, Christina. It was me. And then eventually, as we got older, you know, junior and senior year, we went over to, to WIUS or whatever, and 88.3 The Dog. And that's when we had a full-blown show. I had Gary, the news guy. Um, Joe was on the other side of the glass. But, yeah, that's how it all started. And, and I listened to Joe's podcast, and he was right. Uh, Joe Gatone, I feel so bad for him if he's watching we would literally leave it out, but he was really the only listener. So he would critique the show, what worked, what didn't work. 
And that's really where we learned about production and producing, but we didn't even know we were doing it. Yeah. We were just kind of doing something, which, you know, I didn't learn until later of what, what the hell we were actually doing. Well, one of the things that I remember too is you you gave people, uh, you made your own little promotional devices as giveaways, including yeah. I still have, I think, a mug that says yeah. the Dirt and DJ show. Well, yeah, Dirt and DJ in the morning. We also had a show called Stuff. Um, I remember the, uh, the photo <laughs> we took of that was me standing on a brick trying to match Joe's height. It was perfect. I was in moccasins. Um, and yeah, we, we really tried to, to emulate and get our brand out there within the Macomb scene. One of the things that we didn't do that I really regret. So anybody watching today in, in uh, you know, Buzz's class, you know, I really wanted to do a live remote. I really wanted to get to a coffee shop. I really wanted to get into the, you know, the pace or, or do a live broadcast at night when everybody was there. I think if, if, if I could go back, that's one thing we would do, but uh, um, yeah, we had to make our own stuff and we got it. We would literally staple them to, I think telephone poles and, and Joe knew a lot of the guys on the baseball team. I knew a lot of guys on the soccer team. So yeah, we were just running crazy down there. And then it wasn't until junior or senior year where, I mean, it was you, Don Norton, Sharon, everybody kind of came together. I was like, yo, these guys want to do, I, I forget, it might've been Sandler's class where we have to fill out what we wanted to do. And I put on the sheet, you had to like fill out a half hour, you know, to do radio. And I filled out, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. And Joe did the same thing. And, and after that, it might have even been you. You guys were like, listen, you guys only need to do like, you know, half hour big. You just play music. We're like, no, we want to do a show. Um, yeah, we ended up winning awards. Sorry, I'm jumping all over right now. But yeah, it was such a great run. Yeah, it was amazing. It really, you know, what it did. And I told your story, uh, what you and, and Joe did for years to our students about saying, you know, you may think that you're, you know, putting together something unique, but there were people that came here before you. <laughs> and I, I would tell them your stories about, you know, that's dedication and that's what you have to have. Waking up, we didn't realize we were doing it, but waking up every day in the miserable cold. I mean, college students getting up <laughs> at 430 in the morning, we would get up. Joe was always on time. It wasn't for Joe. I wouldn't have made it half the time. He was always picking me up, you know, making sure I got up. But uh we would get there. And then uh, I remember my last year, I took a lot of pride in just playing classic rock. And uh, we had, er I think we had a lot of, um, it was, you know, a hip hop station at the time. We were playing a lot of music in that genre, which I love, but um, you know, playing classic rock was uh, really my love. And so I would just play, you know, seven at seven or eight at eight. And I would get a lot of call-ins from that to people saying, Hey, this is great. You know, we love the change of pace. And I think I would do that from six to 10, I think that last semester I was at, at Western, that's all I did. I had uh, a 10 o'clock class with, with Don, and then I went and did radio for two hours, and I went home. It was just, it was ridiculous, but it was great. So you kind of talked a little bit about some of the professors, Don Norton, Roger Sadler, Sharon Evans. Um, what other memories do you have of, you know, being up in Salee Hall and, you know, other students or even those guys? Um, I think it reminded me of being in high school in a way because you got, it, it had that culture. The culture was great. I mean, we would, whether you were doing audio production or you had to put together your video documentary for the end of the year, learning how to video edit, go out and shoot B-roll, be, you know, kind of a, a one man band because everybody knows that in this industry, you've kind of got to do everything because yeah. you don't know where you're going to land. Right. You might be running a TV camera, but never did TV at, at Western. Um, I wish I got more involved in the sports truck, to be honest. I thought I would have been great in the booth buzz, but I never, uh, <clears throat> I never ventured over there. The morning show was enough for me. I was like, this is, this is plenty. But um, uh, I, there's so many memories of being with the, with the, with the folks. It went by so fast and uh, the culture really is what kept bringing me back. And um, I guess back to, to class, you know, but it was really, I didn't view it as class. It was, it was important to me to pick a major that I enjoyed and that was was what I what I did. And, um, you know, I felt at the time and even still today, radio is such a forgotten thing. And there's a lot of ways that you can be creative through audio. Um, you can yeah. tell stories. And so, um, yeah, I, I really uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed was was Norton's uh, little pieces we had to put together. That's really where I first started editing on Adobe Audition and making a little piece on a, a sports uh, team in 1972. And, you know, we got a year and we had to go make our own pieces. I thought that was really fun. And um, like I said, 
showing up every day, cold, getting in that elevator, <clears throat> going up there, and nobody was there. Uh, you know, I would open the door every day, and that meant a lot to me. And you had to be entertaining. And I think that's, you know, as, as I told you, as, as we were getting started, you know, listening to your podcast today reminds me of when you were back in college, you know, just you were always had this knack for entertaining, but also telling stories, which I think is, is a really important skill for any person, any college student to learn along the way. Writing is absolutely important. But storytelling and being able to communicate with other people is really something that you will translate into anything that you do. Yeah, and that's why I always enjoyed speech class because, you know, um, you have to throw a little bit of entertainment in there, but you also have to keep people entertained. And, um, you know, it's just a knack that I have and I've been, you know, uh, it's a gift. And um, I, I remember when I was coming back in to do a podcast, I, I told my wife, I said, Hey, you know, I think I'm ready to do this and, you know, uh, get back into it. And she's like, are you sure? You know, you've been out of social media for 10 years. And, um, I didn't want to be on my deathbed, never having my own show, you know, or never trying it or, you know, and, and I, we're not, um, trying, it's not, it's not anything. I don't, it could, and it could be something. And I just got a letter, uh, literally a letter, like it was 1992 from somebody, um, uh, from Indianapolis who knows a friend of mine who said, Hey, I enjoy your show. I've never even met her, but she's like, uh, whenever I need a good laugh, I turn it on. And <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't realize that when you're doing it, <laughs> you know, you're just doing your thing, telling stories, but you're right. And so much has translated from the years I spent out of radio where I took those skills that I didn't even realize I had in sales yeah. And it was the same thing. You were telling stories or, you know, whether when I was in radio doing producing, booking agents, you know, to building relationships with, uh, you know, the, the, the Chicago Blackhawks organization, because you need to get a certain guest on the air at 715 the next day. Why are they going to choose you over the next, you know, competitor? Let's say it's ESPN. Well, they know you and they're going to do you a favor. Right. So I didn't really know what I was building at that time until, you know, I was in it. So when you uh, got done uh, with your academic uh, uh, requirements, you went and did an internship at the SCORE. You want to talk a little bit about that and how that, uh, what you had to do for that? Yeah, that was, uh, that was another important part because I remember when we were leaving, part of our goal in one of the classes was to find an internship. And the one I really wanted was 670 to SCORE. I had tried ESPN. It didn't work. CBS, a couple other places. Um, and they had responded and said, Hey, well, we're not taking anybody right now, but thanks for the application. We'll, we'll look at it again. So I kept sending it. I kept sending it every Friday. I would just send the letter. Hey, Andy Garcia. He was the, uh, at the sports director at the time. Uh, and thank you, Andy Garcia for really giving me my start because, um, he eventually called me and said, you have to stop sending me mail. And I said, listen, I really, I'll do it for free. I just want to be a part of it. So he said, okay, come in Tuesday at 10. So, you know, I was like, Oh my God. Okay, great. Uh, and this was in the summer. So I went home, it was like June and started the internship. I just showed up. I remember I had, I didn't have any brown shoes or khakis. I, my mom was like, you know, she took me out, bought me some clothes that, you know, looked nice and just walked in and Andy said, all right, sit here. Whenever these guys ask you to do something, do something. And that's how it started. So I'd run and get coffee. I'd run and get donuts. Uh, I wasn't even on a show. I would just stay there for eight hours a day and uh, started kind of learning who the, who the guys were and they saw me. And then, uh, I started interning there officially for the Molly and Hanley morning show from 10 to noon. Um, it was unpaid, just kept grinding. Uh, I did my own segment called taking it to the streets where I would go out and interview people outside the United center, Wrigley field or Sox park. And we would talk about anything. Hey, what do you think of the game? What do you think about the upcoming playoffs? And I would edit it down to a minute segment. Um, we eventually got sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts, uh, which was a big sponsor for us at the time. I was shooting for new balance though, because I was out on the street. I wanted to wear their shoes. <laughs> they, they didn't like that idea though. Um, so uh, after that, <clears throat> our show kept growing and we got promoted to the morning. So we were now six to 10 or five to 10 uh, in the third market. I was an associate producer and I finally made executive producer. And uh, there I was six years in an executive producer of a morning show for the third largest, um, you know, uh, geographic region in the United States. And uh, wow, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe I made it there, you know? And then that's when, that's also when I realized this isn't what I want to do. Yeah. And as we were talking a little bit of, of before we, we started the podcast as well, you know, part of that is um, 
you know, because I, I worked in radio when I first uh, got out as well. And, and I was happy I got to do it. It was a very creative part of my life. Um, but as you said, it's a grind and it's something that, um, you know, some people are suited for the long term, you know, marathon style, but other people, you just, you can't keep at that pace. No, and especially if you want a family. And I mean, because because I was there and out of it, it came down to, uh, you know, I was making $500 every two weeks in, in the third largest market. So, you know, you can't survive. I met a, a, a beautiful woman who is now my wife. And, you know, we kind of said, hey, you know, at what point are we going to take that next step? And um, it was about six years in uh, after the Hawks won, I think their third cup. We had covered it. I'd been there, hung out with all the players. Um, I said, I think I've done everything and I need to, to go do something else. And that's when I officially left the, the radio industry. All the Twitter accounts went dead. Instagram, you know, I basically fell off uh, the face of the earth at that time and went into my next career. So you got into sales and, yeah. uh, and you have, uh, you, you moved into a, a second job, which is the one that you're currently in the U.S. Signal. Um, but as we've kind of talked about, uh, I see, you know, a lot of what you, you know, the skills that you developed over that period of time must have worked pretty well for you and what you're doing now because you're having great success. Yeah. And, and, and in, on the, on the event of telling stories, you know, I had the aha moment when I was sitting in my apartment in downtown Chicago and I just had gotten off the phone in a conversation with my landlord and my roommate at the time said, you know, what they say, because I was about nine months behind in rent. I owed him about five grand. And I go, she just told me that I should go into sales. And uh, I was talking to my landlord and, and she said, you should go into sales. I said, why, why, why? She's like, you've been selling me for nine months that you're going to have my rent. She goes, Dave, I need something here. And she goes, I don't even know why I want you to stay here. Uh, and then I went home, talked to my dad. My dad's been in sales his whole life. So it's in my blood. He's, he's, he's done sales for 50 plus years, still does it today. He's retired. And I said, okay, this is what I need to be doing. Um, so I went to CDW, a major uh, value-added reseller. Um, and I needed that. That was, I was older too. There's a lot of people that go there right out of college. So I was five years, you know, so I was a little bit behind and, um, you know, uh, flourished there. It was awesome. I, I really liked the culture there and then needed to do something different and then ended up being um, a, a regional director of partner sales here. But yeah, you're right. You have to take, you know, just as you're building relationships with agents, it's the same as building relationships with CIOs or IT uh, folks, but the grind is still there. You have to be fast. You have to be quick. You have to respond. These folks have to trust you just as your listeners do, right? Because they wouldn't listen to you or watch you if you're in the entertainment field. So um, I, I, going through all of that has put me where I am today. And it's, it's, it's crazy that I missed it when I, when I saw it, it was like there, you know what I mean, Buzz? Yeah. But I didn't even see it because my mind was so off of it that um, now the platform is here for me to do what I've always wanted to do, which was to have my own show. You know, when I, I, I talk with our students quite often, I, I want them to open up the possibility of, yes, uh, you may want to be in news or sports at some period of time, but you should consider the possibility of sales because, you know, there, there's going to be a new world that opens up for you once you get into the world of sales, because yeah. that also will eventually lead to management. Um, and, and they're just, it's so much, you know, for so many people, they need to consider that within our business. Yeah. And you get that stability, right? If you want yeah. to have kids, I mean, you're not going to be making the big money unless you're actually on the air, but if you're okay, you know, um, and, and everybody's financial situation is different. Maybe you have money, maybe you come from money, maybe you don't, right? And you're okay being a, a, a producer on the set of WGN in Chicago or just a camera person or, or an audio guy in a Fox truck, you know, or working in an affiliate station down in Oklahoma City, but your goal is to get to Los Angeles or New York. Just keep chugging away, but you're right, it's not for everybody. And, you know, I think sales gets a very bad rap, right? Everybody says, oh, you go to sales. That's because it's for all the people that couldn't make it and what they wanted to do. And the reality is, no, it's a great career. There's a lot of jobs out there, but you do learn a lot about yourself and, and you handle rejection a lot differently. You know, I had, I talked to some guests on the air and it's not as much as rejection, but they might be getting a little weird or off track. Mm -hmm. You learn how to reel it back in because you've had these tough conversations with people before. So um, it is important for people to know that it is also okay 
I mean, it was the hardest thing I had to do to walk away from a dream. Um, and quite frankly, I would say I'm still chasing that dream. You know, I'm 36. I'll be 37 in September. Um, but I feel like I'm 23. We're having a blast and it fits the schedule. And don't even worry about it. If you have any ambitions of doing something down the road, you can. And I look at the stuff that's out there today between TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and all the editing software. And you could do everything from your phone now. I mean, even from the time I was at uh, you know, WEIU, I mean, man, it's just, it's changed so much. And like you said, yeah, I think sales should be a major at the university, honestly. <laughs> well, all, we did. I, all of our students that, that were in my class had to do a podcast one episode uh, oh, oh, really? last semester. So, oh, cool. Yeah. So how did you, how did you get into this? I, I love, first of all, I listened to your show. And Thanks. it was so entertaining, uh, and 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 as I said, so well produced. I mean, yeah. you could tell when listening to it. But tell us a little bit about your show, and mm -hmm. and why you decided to do this. So, DIT podcast, Dave is talking is because uh, a I'm always talking, uh, and b <laughs> we hope it's to somebody, and uh, we do have guests on the show, and most of them are people that I know, whether they're in the family or they're friends. But we get along so well that it's entertaining. And it's just conversation. Um, we used to have a program called Everything is Anything, because when you walk outside, everything is literally anything. You can look at the concrete that's cracked. Uh, you can look at each blade of grass down to the dirt or maybe even the fertilizer buzz that's still sitting there from last week. Right. That nitrogen hasn't set in yet because the rain hasn't hit it. There's so much going on around us each and every day from being home from the pandemic and COVID. I've noticed so much about my neighbors or the, the fence. And it's like, how was I even able to leave the house for eight hours a day? I'm managing and running a whole operation here. I'm like operations manager. So we take kind of a Seinfeld approach, Larry David, you know, not to the extreme, but I mean, you know, it's what kind of rake do you like to use a metal rake or a plastic rake? Why do you like the plastic rake? The metal rake might you know, get some leaves on it. You might not like that. So it's really whatever's going on. And I tell stories about, um, you know, my life and we have some of our family members on over and over again. So our fans can listen to them and get a rapport. And, you know, we like to build drama, but the show uh, is really, um, we, we don't even know what it's about. It's just, it, it's the main premise is if you need to get away, you know, turn us on and, and maybe get a, get a, get a good uh, laugh, but there's two types. There's the rants that I do that are usually 30 minutes. And then every Friday we try and have a guest on the show, somebody that I know who's interested in cigars or cars. And to be quite honest, Buzz, one of the, the main reasons we did it was I wanted to interview everyday people who work eight to five, nine to five jobs, but also have, let's not call it a side hustle, but are very, uh, you know, they're all about whatever they're doing. It could be, you know, knitting blankets and selling them, making sure. candles, doing honey. And I wanted to interview them to not only talk about what they normally do, but whatever their hobby was or whatever their side project was. And in doing so, I realized that I was doing my side hustle too, which is podcasting. So um, I was doing exactly what they were doing. I work a nine to five job, but I also do this while I interview them about whatever they have getting the word out there. So uh, I guess, maybe a little Joe Rogan-esque for, you know, creative people, other creatives. And that's really been the one thing. Now I'm ranting, Buzz, but the one thing that's opened up on top of this is the creatives. I'm a creative. You know, the next person down the street who's doing a, a podcast, who's trying to get his stuff out there is another creative. Uh, a, a guy who takes photos is a creative. So we want to connect with them. We want to get on their page, share, boom. And then everybody kind of gets involved and it's, you know, you're building your own following through this medium, which is really cool because I used to just scroll and look at stuff. And now I'm using it to try and get try and get my stuff out there as a platform. And and people are are very open to listening to them, I, I tell you. But I, I really enjoyed and I guess you told me it was a rant, but mm -hmm. I still appreciate it because, first of all, you talked about Bulls basketball. Yeah. I love Tony it. Kukos. <laughs> yeah. The, Tony Kukoc and. And, and so I'm like, yes, these are all things that I'm, I'm so happy you're talking about. You're talking yeah. about golfing, even though I'm not a, a, a okay. you know, I, and yeah. I'm not in the Chicago area. I appreciate yeah. that you're talking about yep. the, uh, the Midwest approach to golfing. Yeah, that could have been anywhere. I, I shouldn't have segmented that, but in the Midwest, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was terrific. It was, and you did it in, uh, in all in such a humorous way. And, and uh, I just thought, now this is exactly what, you know, 
will be attractive to people is, you know, things that they can connect with and, and are relatable. As you said, somebody has a job and says, you know what, Every, I'm thinking these thoughts in my head and here's somebody saying them for me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and very fortunate to do it. And I think the one way I'm able to do it is because I do have that skill of production, like you touched on. Um, and not tooting the horn, but a lot of people have noticed that. They're like, you know, who, who, who produces these? And, and we do, I do it all. Um, um, and I just love to do it. And, you know, yeah, you got a knack for it. So I almost feel like some of the conversations I have with my family are too good to be true. And I'm like, other people need to hear this. So let's get it out there. You <laughs> and know? you're doing it right there. It, now, we this is your studio, but yes. it's also your garage, right? Yeah, so we've got a little hybrid approach here. Uh, we were going to build a wall and actually build a studio slash office. And then I said, you know what, we're going to kind of leave it the way it is. And it's a it's a double car garage. But uh, this side of the garage is the studio, which is a long table, some chairs. Uh, we've got uh, about four mics. And then uh, over here to my left is our little production area where uh, we do our production. And then it's also my office. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be fun. We're going to kind of take the approach of... Uh, if you come in here, you're going to sweat it out a little bit uh, in the summer. Uh, and then in the winter, you know, you can come in and, and kind of uh, be chilly. So that's kind of uh, part of it, right? If you come in the studio, you're going to have fun. And, and hopefully most people who come in here are like, wow, you weren't lying. This is actually in a garage. But we've got the TV going. We've got the fridge stock, um, cigars. It's a really good time. And it's amazing just what comes out of a conversation between people, you know, like we're doing right now. I mean, you just listening to people talk about everyday stuff, you know, it's not the Kardashian lifestyle or LeBron, you know, it's, this is really you know, what's, what's going on out there. And if I can help somebody change their lawn, you know, get it a little greener or get those dandelions out of there, you know, cause I do a whole lawn segment, you know, well, one lawn at a time, those. Yeah, because uh, you you did. I remember you talked about dogs. And yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. oh God, that's a whole other story. And it's just so painful, you know. Yeah, female dogs. Yeah, they'll kill your grass. So I definitely recommend if you have the opportunity to uh, to listen to Davis talking. And uh, just before we started, in your garage there, or in your in your lab or your studio area, you have a, a keepsake from WIU. Can you show? Yeah. Oh my that? God! I almost forgot. Yeah. Yeah, we got to show that. And you know what's funny is not even a lot of people talk about this, but I need to prove to everybody that I actually graduated. They don't even believe it. <laughs> so this is the this is the um the 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 degree. And then there is Sharon and me um when I was just graduating. Um you know, I mean, yeah, pretty hungover that day, but it was a great day. <laughs> that was a great day. And yeah, I, awesome. framed, I framed it and I got it up here and yeah, I don't even know if people notice it's there. It's weird, but I love it. I love and I love Sharon. You know, every time I look at it, I'll end on this. The same way I got into the score was the same way I got on WI in, into WIU. I, I wasn't accepted the first time. I had to write a letter. Um, I had to get on academics. And um, you know, one of the things I told everybody was there. You know, I, I literally wrote a letter. Let's not base this on grades right now. Like, I, I'll figure it out. Let me get in. And and it was it was letter after letter after letter, and then I finally got in. So that whole thing is kind of. Um, you know, brought me along the life track. And it's just, it's just, you got to keep grinding. And, you know, I'm probably not even putting out as much content today, but like, you know, I got another job to do. So. Well, I tell you, we we were fortunate to have you. And I'm, I'm just going to say that you added to, um, to what made this place special in that period of time. And, and uh, we were better uh, for having you as, as part of our population, because as I said, um, your creativity um, and, and your passion came through in what you were doing for us. And, and um, I just think it, it, it's awesome to be able to see where you are now and to, uh, to say, you know, that uh, to see that, you know, you have a family, you have this uh, um, not only a regular job, but you're doing some creative things on the side. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And, 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 and happy, right? You know, I'm not even getting paid for this. It's just it's, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. But it's great because, you know, I figure if we do it long enough, somebody will listen. And they will. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, Dave. No problem, Buzz. Thanks for having me. Uh, and, and you're doing a great job with this thing. I love it. When I saw Joe Roderick up there, I was like, oh, man, I got I to gotta be on it. Maybe the next one, it's all of us. And then we're talking about just the, just the show. <laughs> I should try to pair people up like you and Joe because 
yeah. just to be, I think to he- have people hear both of you yes. share those stories yes. at and the same time. Trust me. And when I say this, his long-term is way better than mine. <laughs> so he'll, he'll have, he'll have really good stories. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Dave Novazar, thank you again for, for joining us. And uh, remember, for those that are watching, uh, if, if you are interested in being on the podcast, please reach out to me. If you have somebody like Joe recommended that I contact DJ and say, hey, you should have him on the show as well. Make sure to do so because we, uh, we want to highlight our graduates, our alums, and, and really uh, tell their stories as well. So until then, make sure to join me again next week when I have another story from another alumnus. Until then, stay safe, take care, and God bless.